everybody, I'm Lori Dew, and welcome to Over the Hump on For Real Living. Today, it's all about getting over the hump of negativity and learning to let go of the past. Such an important thing to do. And someone who has freed himself from a lot of unnecessary stress is my very special co-host today, behavioral health and fitness expert and host of Workout From Within, right here on For Real Living. He's obviously going to be a familiar face to everyone watching. Jeff Halavy, hi. Hi, how are you? I'm great. I'm great so glad to you're here, here today. Yes, thank thank you. you. You're in terrible shape. You need to start working out. You know, people have been saying I've been letting myself go. <laughs> um, it just looks good on TV. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's. It, I think letting you know letting go is one of those very difficult things to do for most people. So I, hard. It's very very common, and I I think that the reason for that is I mean there are a lot of expressions that kind of. Um, relay this sentiment and that's that almost like you know like a known evil is better than an unknown evil so we're more comfortable holding on to that past that we had instead of a future unknown that could be far better but hanging on to the past can be so toxic it can make you physically sick i mean i have instances in fact i'll just go ahead and share a few things there are three major things that i have had to let go of in my life the first was my divorce which at the time was incredibly painful it was the right decision to sure. make it was the right thing to get divorced but when i was in it it was so painful it took me a while to let go of the damage that was done in that relationship the second thing was being let go by a major news network uh, that i had been part of it took me years to get over the fact that they didn't want me anymore that i had been rejected um, and the third thing of course everybody knows or a lot of people know that i'm in recovery from alcoholism and what i have learned is that I want to learn from the past. I want to learn from all the mistakes I made when I was out there abusing alcohol, but I don't want to dwell on it. Right. Now, what about you? Well, I think there's, let me just touch on that really quickly before I get into, into my story. Uh, I think there, you know, there's really an element over there if we kind of chunk up a little bit and look at all of that, that, you know, and I like, this is what I like to say. This is from my favorite author, Jeff Halliday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, and it's, it's, you are not who you were. You are who you are. Yes. And I think that people tend to forget that, that the act of being identity is something that's fluid and ever shifting. You know, so when you hold on to your past, you're really doing yourself a disservice of being who you are in the moment at any moment in time. Yeah. So when someone says I'm a bad person or I'm someone who's rejected. That yeah. doesn't, that's not terminal. And I think that too often we process identity that way. And, you know, getting to, I guess, what brings me here. Yeah. It, what have you had to let go of? Oh. <laughs> no, really, tell, I've, tell I've, our uh, audience about it. I've, I've had to let go of, of quite a bit. You know, I think that the biggest things that I've had to let go of, um, you know, people often say that, um, I'll, I'll probably, I'll take the, the, the least emotional one first. But okay. Everybody always talks about how making your first million is the hardest. Yeah, that's going to take me forever. But anyway, yes, yes, I, they do say that. Okay. I, no, I completely disagree with it. I think that losing your first million is the hardest, <laughs> and I can I can testify to that. You know, so I went through a very difficult situation where uh, I had to uh, essentially uh, leave a business and forfeit a uh, million dollars in equity in oh. 24 hours. There we go. You know, I lost wow. it. So you know, there's certainly uh, financial things that I've had to let go of in my life, um, and you know, I can assure you that there were elements of uh, being hurt in the context of a partnership there you know some that just hurts when you yeah. trust somebody and but you know I think that some of the deeper seated ones are really you know some of the uh, early uh, childhood illness that I had when I was a uh, when I was a teenager I had a tumor the size of a pear uh, that nearly cost me my eyesight and uh, and brain damaged me uh, oh several goodness. years later I got into uh, into substance abuse mm -hmm. um, and uh, these are things that uh, they constitute who I am. They are I, part of your life. Absolutely. But they do not make up who you are today. Well, they do and they don't. Yeah, and I right. think yeah I guess they are sort of always <laughs> a part of you, but you don't let them define you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny because like the way I like to think about it is almost like a totem pole, you know. Mm. So totem poles, you know, are, are supposed to tell this story. So our past, which is behind us or at the bottom of that totem, bowl, a totem pole, uh, is necessary. It's the foundation for the top. But the story can always change as you build it. And your story really always changes until you can no longer tell your story and, I mean, not to get morbid, and, you know, the day that you die. I yeah. mean, but we're, we're the sum of all our decisions, and I think that the decision to let go and move on is probably... 
It's a great one. It's an empowering one, I think. And you know, being in a program of recovery, you know, we're often told you've got to let go. And you really have to let go of the things that you're not in control of. You have to accept things that you can't serenity change. Serenity prayer. The serenity prayer, exactly. And I just think that's, you know, that's been super important for me. Also, you hear this phrase a lot, one day at a time. Mm -hmm. People go, oh gosh, one day at a time. I hear that all the time. But for me, that's how I literally have to live. Right. It, it is a 12-step saying, but it applies, I think, to everything in life including not hanging on to the past. And, and, I, I, and I just want to preface what I'm about to say with this, and that's that whatever works for someone in order to uh, you know, maintain their sobriety or get through a difficulty in life I think is great. I won't live one day at a time. Mm. Um, that's something that I won't do. And the reason for that is I don't want to carry, to me, that would be holding on to my past a bit more than I want to. It would, I want, really? It would, because recovery recovery is something that's terminal. It means that for the rest of your life, you're in this state. Yeah, and, what, and that's how I see my recovery. I see, I see that you know I'm always going to be an alcoholic and I'm always going to be in recovery. But it's different for every person. Well, and look, and, and, the, thing, and the point that I, I made when I prefaced this is if that works for you, I think you should do that. But I speak all over the world about... Um, uh, addiction and and recovery mm -hmm. and when I talk about it I talk about it in my terms and I say look this is something that happened in a certain context at a certain time and it helps you compartmentalize it mm. and you know and really move on so that it doesn't feel like it's something that's gonna always be with you you know yeah. so I think that that makes it a little more difficult hey, to if it works for you that's great now I have a really 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 important question to ask this is a very serious question have I'm you, single have you <laughs> Uh, great. <laughs> I am too, but no, I'm not. I have a great boyfriend. Okay, so have you always looked like this? Uh, no, I did not. Well, like what? Um, <laughs> I was always, I was always male. <laughs> I will tell you, I was always male. I was born that way, and I have always looked like that. You know what I mean? Meaning in great have shape, I always been very attractive. <laughs> obviously, taking good care of yourself. Um, that middle one, thank you very much for being in good shape. Uh, I I was not. Um, I, I grew up um, kind of back and forth. Like I I I'd get um, overweight, and then I played high school sports, and I got into shape. But then um, I really let myself go. Just for a sec, we're showing a picture of you before you got in shape. You yeah. look like a completely different person. Now you know what's interesting? That's actually from yesterday. Yeah, I right. clean up really well. Oh, yeah, so. I don't think so. <laughs> but I mean, but Th that look was at this. from a very bad. Yeah, that that was from a very bad uh, period in in my life. Uh, Have you let it go? Completely let it go. Yeah, um, right. To tell you the truth, those pictures still nauseate me. Um, Why? You know, isn't it great though to look at them and then say that's not me? Any, I mean. I've moved, moved on. Sure, from that. I mean it just it's it's such it, it just evokes this visceral reaction where I you know I can't believe that I was that person mm. and you know they mean it's more than a picture. It reminds me of how I treated others, how I treated my family, and I get it. There is a picture of me, and if I can find it, I'll bring it in. And it's me drunk, passed out in a corner of a room. And whenever I see that picture, and it's somewhere in my apartment, I think, oh my gosh, was that really me? But I have let it go, thank goodness. All right, phone lines are burning up, as you would expect. Everybody wants to talk. So let's go to Mike, who's in Columbia, Missouri. Mike, what's your question or comment? Hey, um, I had a problem with alcohol in my 20s, and I'm sober now, but my friends are uncomfortable around me when they talk about going out drinking, and I was just wondering how I can make this less uncomfortable. Well, are they really good friends of yours? Do you consider them close friends? Yeah, they're still my best friend. Okay, so why are they having a hard time with you not drinking? I, if, I just feel like um, really good they think friends. it's going to be weird. They're looking they're at you weird. I would say maybe um, talk to them about your disease. Tell them that you made a very courageous decision to get sober, and you would hope that if they're really good friends, they would respect that. And if they don't respect it, and if they're uncomfortable around you, I would say maybe find some new friends. What do you think? You know, it's, it's upsetting to hear. I, when, yeah. I, when I hear something like, because I went through similar scenarios, and I, for me, my solution was to completely eliminate the life that I had before, which mm. meant cutting out tons of friends. I was essentially friendless when I got through uh, rehab. And, and when I say rehab, 
um, it, was my, it was actually my sixth rehab. <laughs> that was slow hey, learner. People don't always get it the first time. Thank goodness you kept trying. I, I did keep trying. But, you know, it's, it's the same scenario that you get when you're sitting at a table and someone says, I want the salad dressing on the side, and everybody looks at you <laughs> like you're crazy. And, you know, you need to do the things that, that are, are um, you know, are right for yourself and, and just know that you're operating from center. Right. And you know what, Mike? Put yourself first here. Take care of yourself first. You know, if, you're, if they're really friends, they'll stick around. Okay? Thank you, guys. All right. Mike, I'm really glad you called in. Thanks a lot. Thank and you. And Jeff, I'm very excited that you're sticking around for the whole hour. We're not getting rid of you. No way. <laughs> you're going to be here for the whole hour. And when we come back, we're going to meet a man who faced a crossroad with his career after 9-11, as so many people did after that horrible day. How did he get past his emotional hump? We're going to find out coming up next.